Hello, I'm Alex from IGN and I'm joined by Daniel Creeper. Hello. We are going to go through the opening 10 minutes or so of the new Star Trek game, which comes out in the next few weeks. Obviously, it's the game that bridges the gap between the uh, first movie and the second movie, which is out in May. What's going on down there? The radiation from those binary stars is making communications difficult. So, so Kirk has just walked onto the Enterprise bridge. Yeah, so it's right at the beginning of the game. You go into the bridge and your crew, as they would in Star Trek, are briefing you on a distress signal from a nearby um, space station. Uh, obviously, all the voices that are in the game are from the actors that play it. So you've got Chris Pine as Kurt, you've got Zachary Quinto, Simon Pegg. And Scotty, Scotty being Scotty, is saying, well, you can't use the transporters, you've got to go by shuttle. Of course it would be too easy. Yeah, of course. So we're down in the hangar bay now, and, and you're playing as Captain Kirk, but um, can you play as both Kirk and Spock, or yeah, how does so, that work? Um, right at the beginning of um, the game, and in Mission Select, you can choose to be either Kirk or Spock. Both characters play exactly the same. Um, the differences really kind of manifest in personality and the banter throughout the game right. and bits of dialogue, but they don't have different, they don't have different abilities. Okay. Um, what you will find during the course of the game is that um, Kirk will experience things that Spock won't experience. There might be situations where Kirk is injured and Spock will be protecting him, getting him to a medical bay. Right. And you'll only experience it that way around if you play as Kirk. Okay. All right. So it's, it's like Gears of War yeah. in some respects. So some, some moments are asymmetrical. Gotcha. So we're in the shuttle on our way down to the, uh, the space station that's currently being fried by that rather large sun. Yeah. And in the background, you can hear um, the very distinctive... Uh, music by Michael Giacchino. They've kind of reworked the theme, which like one of the best things about that J.J. Abrams movie yeah. was the music. It was so kind of evocative and kind of got the goosebumps going on your forearms. Also, it's got lens flare by the ton, as you can see there, this being uh, based on the J.J. Abrams movie. So we're down on the um, space station. Things aren't looking too good. Yeah, so this is right at the beginning of the game, so what you're going to see are a lot of the core um, aspects of gameplay. It's kind of, you know, the tutorial section of the game. Yeah. So I think he's just gone through a hairdryer. Officer, where is the captain of this station? This way. You must hurry. You could tell he was going to die because the detail in his face just wasn't up there with the, <laughs> with the other two. <laughs> That's how you can tell expendable. <laughs> yeah. So this is the tricorder, the very famous Star Trek tricorder, which kind of looks like detective mode or instinct mode sure. or survival instincts if you play Tomb Raider. I guess it's one of those ways of giving you additional information about your surroundings. But I think in the context of Star Trek, that's what the tricorder does. Yeah. So unlike a lot of these other games, it has kind of a, an internal logic and a rationale behind it. Whereas Laura being a bit of a survivor kind of makes less sense. Yeah. Her hands full. Anything we need to worry about right now? So it's giving you a destination marker. That's simple, really. Just keep an eye on Mr. Chekhov. Aye, aye, sir. Right, here we go. He's going to squeeze through there. It's that classic co-op, oh, um, satisfying co-op mechanic of opening doors together. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically like the trickle pillars. <laughs> what would you do if you didn't have a pal? <laughs> oh no, I can't get through the door. That's why I've never been in my own house. <laughs> he's very calm considering the entire it's world Kirk, around him. He's just, he's just cool, isn't he? Formalities are unnecessary. Please proceed to the shuttle bay for immediate evacuation. Like, like Spock's delivery is. It's, well, it's damn Spock, good. Yeah, yeah, it's really authentic. The, Spock, the, the voice acting of Spock in particular, I think, is really strong. So what's this minigame, what's he trying to do here? He's basically trying to open a door. So you're trying to match the wave um, length um, and the frequency of the waveforms. Right. Um, so the one he's matching is the left one. Yeah. And he's trying to match the right one. Gotcha. But you can't cross those two um, separate arms, otherwise it kind of blows up. It's like Ghostbusters, you can't cross the streams. You can't cross the streams. Bad shit happens if you do. So when you're in the tricorder, you can also give um, Spock or Kirk simplistic instructions like go over there. But I don't think it's really a big part of it. Maybe if you want to get them out of the way quickly. Right. So can you guess Ouch. what we're going to learn how to do now? I would say we're going to learn how to climb. 
So if you've played any kind of third person uh, sort of action game, this probably would be quite intuitive to you. It's, yeah. it's ledge climbing, it's jumping. I think that's the point scrambling here. Scrambling up. Here it's, it's, it's tutorial, right? Sir, we need to disable that laser arm. He's very still the way he's clinging on with his little fingers. So what Kurt did is he disabled, disabled that laser arm using the tricorder. The tricorder can be used to kind of activate things at a distance as well, as well as scanning environmental objects. So if you were playing as Spock at this point, rather than Kirk, you'd be the person clinging on for dear life, looking for a, a way out. Yes, basically getting really good at the climbing mechanics. Right, gotcha. So this is a little bit further into the initial mission where you're about to go outside and face an exploding star. <laughs> of course. Like quite familiar to like anyone who's seen the original film, there were like scenes with this kind of stuff in there, wasn't there? There was solar flares. There was a lot of solar flares and stuff like that. Um, what this is you getting used to is the cover mechanic, which is you know um, really you know good and responsive, and you're probably used to it. So like, if you leave your head out, I guess you're toasted alive. You, you're, you get pretty much get incinerated. Right. So. Again, we've cut forward a little bit in the interest of time to make sure we get inside the space station. And uh, so what's the point of this? This is kind of, well, a Z -G zero G bit where you're running around and trying to get past these rings. Yeah, it's not it's not zero G as such that you don't um, float about like dead space, but it's quite a cool kind of expansive environment. But what this part really showcasing is um, co-op puzzle solving right it's nothing too in depth but you've got to do different things to progress if you're playing single player the uh, AI is pretty smart he'll take care of it but if you're playing with a friend you can play co-op um, he's going to have to do something separate to you and you've got to coordinate right to progress so it definitely seems like Kirk gets the uh, lion's share of the fun things to do because so far he's kind of well shot something He's uh, basically used his tricorder to stop that robotic arm from uh, picking uh, Spock to pieces, whereas Spock just kind of, I don't know, just presses I'm sure some buttons. I'm sure Spock, <laughs> Spock's time will come. Okay. I'll tell you what, I'll be Kirk in the uh, first game, you be Spock. How I'd about rather that? be Spock. So this is um, shooting in cover. Um, Shooting's quite cool, actually. Um, we'll see it later on in another video, but you can, as Star Trek, as, as is true, and in keeping with the mythology of Star Trek, you've got stun and kill on your, every weapon. Right. Which you can use tactically. How do you switch between one Sorry, and the on other? your phaser. Um, it's just um, like secondary fire, so okay. between trigger and probably like right bumper. And do you know, like, are you... Um uh, marks on whether you kind of st kill or stun, or or is it doesn't. Really I'm not sure. I think it's basically to uh, accommodate different play styles. Right. Because you know Starfleet have traditionally been quite a pacifist organization. Sure. So who's this woman they've just picked up? Um, she's a new character to the game, I believe, um, and I think she's she'll play a bigger part of the game. Oh, I mean the woman she just picked up. Yeah. I yeah. think that's just another victim. Okay. I was speaking to my captain. It's all right, Commander. Do as he says. So this is the new character I was referring to. Right. Ah, Captain. I don't believe we've met. I'm uh, James Kirk, Captain of the USS Enterprise. Still trying it on. I am in need of assistance, Captain. That's a funny name. Mr. Spock, it is a relief to see you here. Tamar, in what way can we assist you? Our station has experienced a complete loss of power. Our transporter functions are also unreliable. There does not appear to be a safe way to beam out. There's always a way. Scotty, think you can get a lock on me? I'll try, sir. What's going on down there, Captain? That was a wake-up call, Mr. Scott. I need you to work a little faster. On it, sir. We should make our way to the transporter, Captain. I think Mr. Scott should be a bit better at his job, quite frankly. Yeah. I'm not sure why he can use it now when he can use it at the beginning. Yeah. I like this one. There are a few that you do not like, Captain. The band is good. I must admit I, I that. Think the the script in is Between those smart. two characters in particular, I think it's really strong.
that? Little gravity boots, just in case, obviously. What about all the other poor souls? Did they not have them? <laughs> they, did, they didn't. <laughs> no. They just Don't worth forget it. your gravity boots. So this is the running away from sequence. So everything's just blowing up around you. I do not think this station is salvageable, Captain. Oh, you think so? Sorry, that's a bit of an understatement there. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you stop, Spock? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a nice little kind of you know, blue flare over there. <laughs> Who needs transporters when you've got a shuttle? <laughs> and you can jump really high. So that's the opening 10 minutes of Star Trek. We're going to come back in the uh, next video in which we are going to look, or we'll take our first look at the new enemy in the uh, game, which, which is the Gorn. Yeah, and you can see the Gorn mark there inside the Starfleet and, and symbol. So uh, be sure to check out the next video on IGN.